So now that we've learned about acids and bases, we're going to start looking at acid and base reactions. There are specific type of reaction that we need to learn just for this class. So if you look on your reference table, most of the acid-base reactions that happen fall under the category of double replacement. There are some that are not, so when you get to college chemistry, remember that I said that. But the ones that we care about in this class are double replacement, so that's all we're going to worry about. One thing that you need to remember, and the reason that I teach these separately, is these reactions will not have a precipitates. So remember that we said that double replacement reactions have to have a precipitate for the reaction to take place? That's not the case with an acid-base reaction. It occurs whether or not a precipitate happens. So let's look at an example. Remember that when an acid and a base mix and react, they are going to neutralize because an acid and a base, by definition, one is giving the hydrogen, one is taking the hydrogen. And so we need to think about that when we write the reaction. It's the transfer of the hydrogen ions. So if you look at this uh, kind of generic reaction here, you've got the hydrogen going from the acid and going to the base. So let's look at a specific reaction, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide solutions. And let's write the reaction for this. So the way that we write the reaction is the same way we've always done it. Go ahead and write your reactants. So pause the video and write that. So hopefully you have already started working on memorizing your acids and you remember that HCl is your formula for hydrochloric acid. And it tells you that it's a solution, so we know it's AQ. And then sodium hydroxide is our other reactant. And we know the nomenclature for that. It's just Na, which is a plus one, and OH, which is a minus one. And it's also AQ. So what we want to think about with this is the acid-base part of the reaction. We know that hydrochloric is, uh, acid is the acid because it has acid in the name. And so sodium hydroxide has to be the base. And the base part of that is the hydroxide. So think of it as a double replacement. The hydrogen is going to join with the OH. So I'm going to write a little separate reaction for that down here. So H plus plus OH minus. And then these other two that are left over, Na and Cl, are going to end up together. So if we put H and OH together, hopefully you recognize that that's going to make water. Two hydrogens and an oxygen give us water. So that's what you want to think about with a, an acid and a base. Is one thing is donating the hydrogen, one thing is accepting it. The acid donates, the base accepts. And then because this is a double replacement, the other two ions that are left over form the other product. So this is going to have H2O as a product. And remember, H2O will be a liquid. And then sodium chloride. Sodium's a plus one, chloride's a minus one, so NaCl. Uh, if you look in your solubility rules, hopefully you know that this is soluble, it's AQ. So if you look at that, um, that's actually balanced because you have one hydrogen and one hydroxide which produce one water and then you have one sodium and one chloride left. So that's the reaction for this. So pretty straightforward as a double replacement and you just want to be sure that you recognize that the acid is giving the hydrogen, the base is accepting it. Okay? So let's take a look at another example. So again, same generic reaction, but this time we have acetic acid and barium hydroxide. Pause and write the reactants for this, and then start it up, check and make sure. See if you can figure out what the products are for this one before you start it back up. Okay, so if you are working on memorizing the formulas, remember that acetic acid is the acetate ion with the right number of hydrogens to make it neutral. So acetate has a one minus, so it would need one hydrogen. And then acetate is C2H3O2. And it's a solution, so it would be AQ. And then you have barium hydroxide. So barium is a plus two. Hydroxide is a minus one, so it's going to be BaOH2. And again, that's AQ. All right, so again, think about the acid is going to donate a hydrogen, 
and the hydroxide is going to be the base part that receives it. Now notice that we've got two OHs here and we've only got one H plus. So in order to create water with that, we have to think about balancing. And this just makes it a little bit easier to balance. Some people like to do it this way, thinking about the H's and the OH's. Some people just kind of like to do it the way that we've already learned. But this is one way to look at it. If I have two OH's, I'm going to need two H pluses. In order to have two H pluses, I'm going to have to have two acetic acid molecules. And if I have two H's and two OH's, that's going to give me two H2O's. Okay, so that's going to be one of my products. Remember that water's the liquid. My other product's going to be barium acetate. So I'm going to have BA, and that's a plus two. Acetate's a minus one, so I'm going to need two of those, H3O2 there, C2H3O2, and two. And that is going to be AQ. And if you notice, that is already balanced. So two H's, two OH's gave me two waters, two acetates, and one barium gives me the correct formula for barium acetate. So it's just one way to think about balancing it. Some people just like to write it this way, do it straightforward as a double replacement reaction, and then just balance it when they get to the end. And that's fine. Either way is okay. I just want you thinking about that transfer of hydrogen ions when you do these reactions. All right, let's look at another one. This is hydrochloric acid and sodium sulfide. So HCl, which is AQ, plus sodium sulfide. Sodium is a 1 plus, sulfide is a 2 minus, so it would be Na2S. And again, that's a solution, so that's going to be aqueous. And hopefully you see that this is the acid, so it's going to donate the hydrogen. And then over here, we know that hydrogen and uh, sodium don't tend to form a neutral compound, so hopefully you see here that S is going to be your base part, the thing that accepts the hydrogen. And in order to make that neutral, you would need two hydrogens, which means you need two HCLs, and that would give you H2S, and then you have the other product. This is your double replacement, so H and S have been used. We would have NaCl left. So one sodium and one chloride makes sodium chloride. You have two Na's and two Cl's over here, so to balance that, that would be two NaCl. H2S, hydrogen sulfide, is a gas. Remember that it's covalent, low uh, melting point, so it would tend to be a liquid or a gas. And then sodium chloride is AQ. It's uh, soluble in water. If you have questions on this, we will look at it together in class to make sure that everybody's getting the hang of this. So I'll see you in class.